anyone out there who wants to go fast. Anybody. I want to go fast. Here we are again with the project GTX 1060 and just to recap, uh, if you look in the first video, what we did is we took off the the small heat sink from here. If you can see the original heat sink would end about here. So this would stop. Also, there was no back plate on the memory. See the back plate down here? So I found a newer 1060 and I took the heat sink and the memory plate from that and put it on here. Everything bolted on nicely. And then I have my Be Quiet fan, which doesn't really cool it more, but it's quieter. So even at, um, if I run it at 70%, it's very quiet. Whereas the original fan is very loud because the original fan spins much faster than this one. And so by putting on the bigger heat sink and the memory plate, I was able to go down a couple degrees Celsius and I was able to overclock the memory higher than, than without. Not by much, but just a little bit. But overall, it kind of runs the same. So my theory was um, the SC model of these has a twin fan configuration and a heat sink with copper tubing. And I've been trying to find one. And what I was going to do is put that on here and make like a hybrid SC. But I haven't been able to find one yet. So what I'm going to try and do is take this from a 950. Since the 950 2 gig does not perform very well. And these fans are nice and quiet too. I believe the flange for the the mounting is the same. Pen connector looks the same as this one. And as you can see here, the heat sink doesn't really touch anything. It's actually not even that big, but it does have the copper tubing. This probably cools better than that. So let's see if we can do it. Let's put this heat sink on here. We'll put this heat sink on here and see what happens. This one runs pretty cool, actually, like 70 degrees. This one on auto runs about 80. I can make it go down to 75 if I manually put the fan on 70, but it still struggles to keep up. So let's take them apart and see what happens. So here's the old heat sink which again is larger than the one that came with it. The other one stopped here and part of this was missing. So this one is larger. Here's the 950 heat sink. Very large blow through design, copper pipes. So this would definitely go nicely, um, but it doesn't fit in the original holes. So I have to take off this back plate, or memory plate, sorry, which I just added to this card, by the way. And then it will fit. I already test fitted it if I use the outside holes. So we'll try that. I'm just gonna have to leave this out for now. And then I'm gonna take, I think, this heat sink. It should fit, which I had on the back of the card here and we'll just put that there and it it looks like it'll clear the heat sink so actually the fan air which blows through here and comes down will directly hit this and then uh just won't have one here i'll have to buy another little or one of this and just put it here um but yeah let's go ahead and clean this up and I guess we'll just disregard this for now. I didn't really do a whole lot anyway. This is more effective, at least the air will hit it and provide some cooling here. So we'll be right back. So here it is installed. 
Hopefully this works out. It actually extends past the card quite a bit. The SC model, I believe, only goes to here. So this is a bigger heatsink, but I'll have to check. The heatsink fits well under the grill. And actually you can't put a heatsink here because the, uh, the cooler is right over it. But what you could do is put a nice thermal pad under there There's only two, so not a big deal, but you could put a nice thermal pad there, heatsink here. Uh, it all seems to fit well. My only concern is that it's, since it wasn't really designed to be out here, I don't know if I'm getting even, you know, even tension on the cooler, but I'll be able to see right away because I know what temps are normal. So if I see something out of the ordinary, then I, that means that, uh, I don't have an even application because it's kind of, you know, really big, but actually the, the 950 that it was on is a similar size, so it seemed to be okay for that. But unfortunately, now I've basically killed the 950. So the results are in. I did some testing and benchmarking and good news and bad news. The good news is that it works. The heat sink is awesome. There was an immediate temperature difference between the two. The problem is, and I knew this coming in, the board itself, the single fan board, for some reason cannot control two fans. I actually tried to a while back, I tried to put in two, two of the Be Quiet fans. I tried to plug in two because I have a, a double header and it won't boot. I was hoping that because these are smaller fans, maybe they don't take up so much power that it would work, but uh, it doesn't boot with these fans. So we couldn't do that. But even with no fan connected, the, the idle uh, temperature was much lower than the, the old setup. So the good news is I had one more 92 millimeter Be Quiet fan. So what I did was I just put it here, just as a test. Um, I tried an 80 first. This is more like an 80 size, but that one was a little loud, so. I put the 92 right here. Now normally you would put it in the center, but the reason why I wanted to put it right here is because um, I'm also going to add a, a 120 or 140 millimeter fan in the front of the case. And so if I had to end up using this, my theory is that the air coming from that fan will hit these fins and cool them and we're still kind of on the GPU. Probably doesn't matter. I mean, you could put it in the center. Um, I think if you put this on the edge, you could probably fit two here, but that's kind of overkill. I don't really think that's necessary. But what happened is, uh, so I went ahead and went through my, my benchmarks. And so just to recap, um, if you use this type of heatsink, which looks like a uh, an Intel CPU stock heatsink, um, if you just drop in the card and you play games or do benchmarks, it's going to hit 83 Celsius pretty quick. And when it does, it starts throttling. To combat that, you could set the fan to 50, 60, 70%, and then it won't go over 80, but the fan is super loud. With this here, not only is the idle temperature lower, this is usually about 40, low 40s, this was 37. Um, what happens is it never hits 83. It, it gets to maybe 78, 76. It's, it, it's like five degrees below 
the threshold that would start the throttling. That's with no overclock. Then if I overclock it by 200 megahertz, I don't have to run the 70% fan. I can actually still leave it on auto and the fan gets to maybe 50% after I let a uh, heaven run for a good 15 minutes and it would get up to about the high 70s at 50%. Now 50% on this fan is super quiet. You really can't even hear it. So, I mean, this was great. This was basically free. Um, I wish I could have just bought the SC model. That probably would have saved me many hours of time. But, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna figure out a way to mount this, like, permanently. I'm not gonna do it this way, how this one's directly on the heatsink. I'm just gonna temporarily mount it, probably with zip ties or something, just so I can change fans and try different things. Um, so that's probably what I'm gonna do. Another option is I can... I'm probably going to try this and see. What I think I can do is, so there's two 12 volt fans here. And I think that the 12 volt rail is getting overloaded from the graphics card. So as an experiment, what I'm going to do is just clip the 12 volt on this fan or this, not sure which one and supply it 12 volts from a different source. So in that way, the, the card could still control the fans via the PWM, but it's not being overloaded on the 12 volt side. That should work. If that doesn't work, what I will do is I'll just unplug one fan, tap it that into the CPU fan or the rear exit fan or the front fan and let it share the uh, control that way. The only problem with that is if you tap into those, this fan will run all the time, which is not loud, but that kind of defeats the purpose. The only reason why I want to try and use these fans is because they will stop completely at idle. And I like that feature. Um, if you use this fan, it never stops. It's always going to be at 500 RPM which is fine, you can't hear it anyway. But I'm just thinking as far as like fan life, you know, if this is constantly spinning forever, even at only 500 RPM, I feel like it might wear it out a little bit. So it'd be cool. If I could make this work, great. I'm not really a fan of the looks of this. It's possible that it's not even, I don't know, see so your, the other thing is if you put the shroud back on, you're kind of covering the, the fins. This, this would this would be very close to a passive cooler design, basically. Actually, you know what? I could probably mount this on the case cover, but... You know, then it would just blow directly at it, you know? But I don't think so. I think I'll just mount it here. We'll go ahead and put that, uh, the big fan on the front. Just let air gently flow this way. And then go up. Actually, no, the card is going to be like that. So the fan, the air is going to go kind of that way. It'll find its way around here and then get sucked in through here and then eventually go that way anyway. So, All right, that's part two of this project. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll do a part three um, whenever it's finished. But... Um, so yeah, it runs great, overclocking, much cooler. The uh, the memory heatsink works great too. It's just staying there, kind of stuck on. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. These stick pretty good. But yeah, thanks for watching.